Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. We're so glad that you've decided to join us today. My name is Jonathan. I'm here with Stephen. Stephen, how you doing? I'm well. Thank you for asking. Got a sharp, pressed white shirt on. He looks like he's ready to go today. There you go. Well, folks, before we get started, I want to let you know about uh, some events coming up in March that are uh, really exciting. We've got three Gateway to Freedom workshops that are coming up in Colorado, Pennsylvania, and Oregon. And so we are really wanting to just kind of... uh, Hit the country all at once with these um, workshops. These are powerful three-day weekend workshops for men who are uh, struggling with pornography or any other kind of sexual stronghold and just feel stuck. So this could be a guy on the front end of dealing with this issue. Maybe it's he just recently realized he needs help. It could also be a guy who maybe has been on the journey for a while and just feels stuck. He needs to break through to some some deeper um, uh, freedom. And so these workshops are a great way to do that. Um, we've got great counselors at these workshops. And um, and if you'd like more information about how you can plug in and register, there are limited, there's limited availability space at these workshops. So the sooner you can sign up, the better. Just go to gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-497-8748. Well, Stephen, I'm excited about the topic we're going to talk about today because when, you know, I've been doing this ministry for over... Th- 13 years now, I think. And um, and in that amount of time, literally thousands of men, uh, I've talked with literally thousands of men. And one of the things when I do these little sort of uh, impromptu surveys of men and I ask them, who is your best friend? Did you know I have had, I could probably count on one hand the number of guys that could even begin to attempt to answer that question. Now, and what I mean is the guys that will even attempt to answer that question, most of the time, it's a historical answer. An old well, best Well, when friend? I was in high school or well, oh. when, you know, in college. and and yeah. But there is a huge gaping hole in many men's lives of a friend, a, another male friend. And so this is our topic today. And I want, to, I want you to share with our listeners kind of your ideas behind this and kind of where we're going to go this week on the show. And I think you and I together are going to have this discussion about the value of a male friend, the making of a male friend, just anything that comes to mind. We have open dialogues. These are not like four point bullets where you have, you know, we have all the answers and you take notes and (laughs) we we're talking, we're just talking Two guys talking about life and challenges and, And we're inviting you to our dialogue, and we thank you so much for participating with us. You could be lots of other places, but we get good feedback on people going, I'm right there with the dialogue. I'm part of the dialogue. I'm part of the family. Keep it up. And that's what we feel like. We're just doing a little group here. It's just you and 30,000 other people sitting around a table, and we're just talking about the value today of a male friend. And so... I've just been thinking about it because s- some people are in desperate need of one. Uh, I have a friend um, that goes way back that I love him and he loves me and we can just pick up at any time. And he lives in Seattle. He doesn't even live in San Antonio. But we've been through so much together that I could pick up the phone and, how are you doing? What's going on? We just pick up the conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know... Uh, I just want to throw a few ideas out. You throw a few ideas out. It'd be interesting if we get any feedback on this. But um, the whole idea of, you know, when you're in high school and together all the time and guys doing stuff, and it's sort of natural to make a friend in that in that close daily routine where you're right. Forced in, proximity. Yeah, you know, that exactly. Kind of each other's space. But as we drift off, it gets harder, mm-hmm. you know, as we – have things that pull on us, jobs, families. We have parents that are aging, Mm -hmm. right? There are children that need us, spouses and stuff. So what comes to mind when you think about the value of a true friend? Well, one thing that I think about is, uh, you know, the the concept that came to my mind was, and I put it in quotation marks, was buddies. Mm. Like the the person that you think, you know— I think of people that I have, it like you said, there's a sense of timelessness to the relationship. I've got a couple of guys still even from high school, college timeframes. It's the same way. They don't live, they don't live nearby, 
But whenever we do have those phone conversations or we, you know, sometimes over the holidays, we might be back in the same, you know, hometown area and we're able to connect. It is just like, hey, time never passed, you know, and I'm not saying that we, we are, we are continuing conversations in the past. What I'm saying is, is that it's as if no time passed at all. We're talking about our lives now, <laughs> right? But you know what I mean. It's just it, things That's just good. we just pick up where we left off, and and so I think that is an aspect that um, they it, that is not a skill. That I think is something that you just you just seek out and find that connection. I do think I, I do think there are things to friendships that can be developed. And that would that I would put almost on kind of the skill side. There are things that I think you can grow in mm. in in building friendships. But I think there's this other part that is more of a a kindred spirit that mm. is not something that you can just go pick somebody out of a crowd and say, You're gonna be my friend and then have that. So I do think there are some dynamics of friendship that are not they just exist prior to you guys even meeting. Yes. And I'll tell you one of those aspects, and I want to know what you think about this. I really think if someone's going to be my friend, there has to be a level of respect Mm -hmm. and value in who they are. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm putting three things together. I respect them. I value them. And they bring something. Now, I don't know if those mean anything to you, but this is sort of how I've thought about male friends. I have to look at you as somebody who who has character and is respectful and carries yourself with some sense of dignity and respect. You just carry yourself that way. And then you you recognize you have value. You're doing things and being productive. And then number three, that you bring your value to this relationship, so I have skills and you have skills and maybe you work on cars and I work on houses, right? Or computers or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you bring, one, I respect you as a person and I see you as somebody that's valuable. Um, and then I see that you have skills also and you bring those skills and somehow we enhance each other's lives and and I don't know, how, how do those three words strike you in terms of we're talking about somebody you bond with, yeah. not you just minister, have lunch with, pat them on the back, say thanks, you know, have a good life. Yeah, because it, and I'm glad you used that word because as you were saying that, I had the picture of, because I think some, sometimes maybe people when they heard you say and you bring something, you almost, I wonder if some people out there were saying, man, what are you just a taker or what? But what I, when you said bond, it made me think of this isn't about saying I value you and you bring something to enhance my life. It is about I, I value you and you are investing and I'm also investing. So in other words, you are pouring something into yes. my life that adds value to my life. And you're and I, bringing something, and I'm giving something. But I'm something. doing something That's for you exactly as well. That's exactly right. Yes, it's and a that, mutual. That to me, I almost saw, I mean, and I'm no chemist or anything, but I almost saw as if like two, age, two chemical agents are being poured together and they form a completely new substance. It's like they, they bond together. Mm. So they have to be poured into each other. Yes. You can't just say... Hey, the one is just receiving and it's not actually connecting with the other. So well, and look, nobody said I had it right either. This could be the wrong bad formula, okay? <laughs> just because I have a microphone and you and I are sitting here doesn't mean it's right. And, and you know, maybe this is why I'm sort of selective about friends and stuff. Yeah. Because lots of people, I think, want to be your friends, but some are flaky and some are don't hold up and you you set aside time and they don't show up and after a while it's like wait a minute here when you know that's another you know? good point about about building friendships is i do believe there are there are there's a sense of exclusivity and i'm not saying that in a negative way listeners you cannot be everybody's friend right that's and i true. think there are people out there i think you know i get off on a little rant here for just a second I think social media is screwing up people's minds about friendship. You do not have 3,000 friends, no matter what your Facebook that's page just, says. You know, I, I recognize, you know, listen, I got thousands of quote-unquote friends. On, all that means is they're connected to a page on the Internet. Yes. I actually have probably, I definitely can count on just a few fingers 
the number of male friends. And I what's have. the difference? You could call those guys. I could call my friends and say, I have a problem, and they would bring all their resources to bear. I have time, I have money. What do you need? I have skills. I have, what do you need? They are now at your disposal. And, and not only that, I totally agree with that, but I would even take it a step further. These are the guys that know me. Yes, yes, but there's two and, parts. What you're saying, one part, I'm saying another. They're invested and they know, but they also respond. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So that if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I go, I got a crisis, and I call you, and you go, hey, hey, I'm in bed. Why'd you wake me up? That's the response, but then they say, what do you need? Let's go. I'm here for you. Yeah. So what? I'll lose sleep for you. So what? Right? So there is, I'm saying there is a, a, a response back. Right? And, the other, and the other thing about that, I think, is that, yes, I agree with that. There's definitely a response back, but I think there's also initiative. In other words, I don't, I don't these guys will check on me before I even have, ever have to call. So, but, and there's a back and forth, there is really, because you'll check on yeah, them, yeah, too. Yeah, certainly if there's something they don't know about, and then I call, and right. obviously, obviously it would be available. But part of this friendship, you know, I think some, some things that happens in our, we see in our ministry sometimes is we, we absolutely promote the value of accountability. Men need accountability. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we have to recognize not all accountability relationships form into friendships. That's right. And yeah. sometimes there's confusion there with men. They think, well, hey, no, I meet with so-and-so on Tuesday. He's my friend. No, he's a guy that's holding you accountable because that's the only time you ever meet with him. You have yeah, no it, connection outside of that And you know, And, you know, I want to play off that because I think it makes a good point that really you only have so many openings for friends. Yeah, true you, friends. You cannot have friends. a thousand friends, right? right? And not everybody you're in a meeting with can be your friend, mm-hmm. right? You only have so many openings for friends. That means back and forth, check on each other. I bring my resources, you bring yours, right? We stop the world to help each other. I mean, there, there's only so, – look, we got to take care of our families. We have kids. We have parents. We have jobs. We have church. We have jo- – right? There's only so many openings, for a true friend, and only so much time. To well, and if you use Jesus too, right? He had, he had the smaller group of three, mm-hmm. and then he had the group of twelve, then he had the group of seventy, right? And so, why didn't he just bring everybody with him all the time? Well, that you can't do that, right? Yeah. To have close, intimate brothers, friends. Then we're talking about there. You have to have availability because it takes time. And I think it'd be healthy for our listeners to even in their own lives sort of evaluate where are those lines of intimacy? For instance, I think Jesus was a great example. Um, You know, the three, Peter, James, and John, I would classify in a level of intimate friendship. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the only ones that got to see him actually transfigure on the mountain and say, here's, here, I'm peeling off the veil. You're getting to see the real me. I mean, everything about my glory you're going to, you're getting to see. He didn't reveal that to the twelve. But he did go on a deeper level with the 12 than he did with the 70 or the masses. And so I think each one of us has to determine kind of the environments, the context, and then who is in those categories, so to speak, those levels. Mm. I personally, uh, I kind of like the Jesus model. I personally don't think I could manage more than three deep friendships. And quite honestly, Mm. in terms of season of life, sometimes it's one or two that I can really be investing in. Mm -hmm. And so... I think that's important to realize because some men out there are like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm realizing I don't have a friend. And they think, I got to go grab 10 guys right now and develop these deep relationships. And it's like, man, just chill out and mm-hmm. and think of one man that you know on some level and say, could I, do we have this respect, value, investment mindset with one another? And could we take it to a deeper level? level. Mm, That's good. So I think growth is also a part of this. I need to be around people that are growing, that are dynamic, Mm. you know, spiritually growing, emotionally growing, relationally growing, right? Because you get around people that are stuck. It's like, we had this talk last week. Oh, we had this talk last month. Oh, we had this talk last year. You're still in the same place? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what? Get a book. You know what I mean? Find your Bible, do a devotion, go to a study, take a class, 
work on growth. Everybody work on growth. You become more attractive as a friend, you know, if yeah. you're working on growth, you have ideas and energy and movement. And just on a very practical level, it it is it keeps conversation alive. Mm-hmm. Like you said, if you're having if if exactly the same words are coming out of your mouth today that were coming out a year ago, that puts all the pressure on you to be the the idea guy. Now, I have to admit, listeners, I love getting around Stephen because um, the guy is just like a popcorn machine of <laughs> ideas. So if you're ever around Stephen, there's no shortage of conversation because the guy, you want to talk about a guy who's reading books and growing and stretching and learning. and and Thank you. That blesses me. And I do like the fact that Stephen is willing to get on air and admit he's in a process too. And that's what I like is so... Uh, you know, you're constantly saying, I could be wrong, but I'm really exploring this. And have you thought about how these two things connect over here? And what about a person's identity? And so it's kind of cool. And I just walked in and took over the whiteboard and said, (laughs) okay, look at this. And I mapped out a little flow. And it's like, yeah, it's exciting to be alive and Mm -hmm. growing. And it's really, you know, it's part of what our father made us for, right? We are going to grow from a baby to an adult, Right. The world is in transition. We are in transition. We're going from from fallen to restored. We are being transformed. And it's like, can we enjoy that process? Oh, yeah. And I can promise you, listeners, this program would have ended nine years ago if Stephen hadn't been on because <laughs> he's the one that comes and has all the ideas. So, How funny. So I have a note here. What What's the difference between male r- friendships and female friendships? Mm, yeah. You know? Why, why can't you just be friends as a male? Why can't you just be friends with a lot of girls? Well, in today's day and age, people would argue that there is no difference. Oh. And that's part of the problem, I think, is that we have lost our understanding of the differences between male and female, masculine and feminine. Mm. I do think, though, if we're going to look at it in terms of how I believe we are made, that – and this is going to sound weird, I think, on on its face – I believe we can have deeper friendships with men than we can with women. And uh, and I would even go so far as to say in terms of friendship, I think there can be even a a a bond that can even go closer in friendship than even with a spouse. Now I think the dynamic of a of a husband-wife relationship is completely different, much more intimate because it also inv- involves the sexual intimacy there. But in terms of this idea of friendship, I mean, I think of Jonathan and David in the Bible. I think of Jesus turning to his disciples and says, I call you my friends now. I don't call you servants. You're my friends. Mm. There is a depth of intimacy that I can hap- that I think can happen man to man and woman to woman that is completely unique and deeper. And the reason, I think, is because, Stephen, when I'm sitting across the table from you and we're having a conversation— First of all, there's no weird sexual chemistry dynamic. <laughs> you know, the male female, male female thing. Right? I'm not having Going any down. of that weird flirtatious. Uh, and I'm not. There are people that struggle, obviously, right. with that, and that's part of the confusion that has happened mm. around male male female and relationships. But so that dynamic is not there. But also because we are both men, I can have a pretty good idea of how you think, how you receive what I might be saying to you. You're a guy. So while you have a different personality than I do, just in terms of being male, we already have a sense of a bond that says we sort of get each other. If I get in the room with my wife or with any other women, immediately there's the sexual tension. And there's also the sense of you are way different than I am. Fundamentally, mm-hmm. foundationally, you're different. And so there's always going to be somewhat of a disconnect there in terms of me being able to feel like I fully understand you and you fully understand me. Whereas with a guy, I can go, yeah, I kind of get you and you kind of get me. Right. And so, right. And you can save a lot of dialogue and talk. You can just grunt and point yeah. <laughs> and do guy things. And it's like, I know what that means. I know what that means. Right. I know what you're doing. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's that's a good point. So in some ways it creates an ease of flow with the conversation, yes. with the topic that we might be discussing. And so the and I would say you're right. You, this is a talk about sexuality. This program is. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what this radio program's about. And when you put a female in the room, we're sexual beings. Mm-hmm. I'm male, she's female. That's it. It's just a reality. 
and male and female, you know, there's a different dynamic. And there are forces at work that mm-hmm. between between the male and the female, and and you might talk softer, or my, you know, you know what I mean. Your presentation is different, and all that. So, and well, all of that is on a perfectly healthy level. Yes, it's just the dynamics different. That's right. You know, right? And we're still beings. We're still mm-hmm. sexual beings. You know what I mean? Because there's older women, and there's same age women, there's younger women, and we're mm-hmm. all we have bodies, and we're all sexual beings, and we want to be smart about it, and that's why. Guys that overdevelop their female f- friendships are are suffering. Yeah, you, we men need men. Absolutely, women need women, but men need men to make ourselves better, to challenge us, to refine us, one off another. One of the other things I would say about that, I'm glad you brought that up because there are a lot of guys that are that are falling into this trap of thinking, listen, I have a bunch of girlfriends, and I can, and you know, that's all fine. Here's the thing. A woman, and guys, I want you to listen up here. A woman can never challenge you in a way another man can. That's true. And I'm talking about that in the positive way. Yeah, certainly a guy can challenge you in a negative way. But I'm saying there is no woman out there that can challenge you in terms of growing as a man the way another man can. And so that's why you need men. If you want to grow as a man, you need other men in your life. It's funny because men will be impatient. They'll say, shut up. <laughs> You're stupid. Don't. Women will have, a, you know, they'll, they'll say a paragraph to say, well, I don't know if you see, I don't see it that way. But, you know, another way to look at it would be, it's like a guy would say, shut up. And yeah. that's the end of it. I mean, even the way we talk, right? We hold each other accountable, and uh, and and I think the whole idea of challenge and refinement, and that's why a son needs his father to train him to be a man, mm-hmm. right? And a daughter needs her mother to train her. Now, do do girls need dads? Absolutely, and boys need moms. But but to be a successful man, you have to be around successful men, right? You can't stay with strugglers. You know, with addicts and and people that are, uh, you know, just struggling with life that are that are down, that are broken, and 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 then think you're going to be refined. You have to get around people that are being refined, and that's what the church is about, right? That's what you know, being Christ centered is about. Is the whole idea that we are being transformed into something refined, if you will. And that gets into this other issue that you wrote down here in terms of kind of the the age relationship, you know, as far as uh, there do need to be older, wiser men speaking into younger, you know, less wise men. And and that certainly can be on a father-son relationship, but I do think that can also just be in a friendship. I think we need mentors in our lives. Um, and I do think we also need peers. We need people that are around our same age that are going through season of life issues with us. But I would recommend, uh, and Stephen, you, I love your input on this. I would recommend that in terms of the friendship aspect, that you only have one guy in those categories. So in other words, I don't need five mentors in, in my life in terms of, now, right. I might, I, there might be five guys in my life that are in a leadership position over me that I respect and I glean things from, mm-hmm. but maybe only one of them is one that I'm developing a friendship with. Same thing with peers. Yeah. I think guys that are in the same season of life as I am. I've got one guy in particular that we're going through season of life stuff together. He's a friend. There may be 10 guys around me that are going through the same season of life stuff, but I've reached out to one to really develop the friendship. And then guess what? I also need some younger guys in my life. But mm-hmm. there's while I have a bunch of guys that I am I am mentoring, you know, in terms of trying to disciple and lead them in a life of purity, there's only one that I'm seeking to develop a friendship with. Does that make sense? And so yeah, that's kind that's of the model good. that I use. That's good. So you're saying three. Older, eight same age, younger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I I don't know if this makes sense, but but I've always thought, you know, I've thought about um, this whole idea of how do you make a friend? And everybody wants to be the most popular person's friend. But, and you know, I'll, I'll, you know I, I've gone to the church with Max Lucado, and, uh, and everybody wants to be Max's friend. Sure, yeah. But what you quickly realize is Max doesn't have any openings, and that's no disrespect 
Max can only do so much. He's and, just like the rest of us. He yeah, can only have so many friends. He's got some friends. And this guy said, I came to this church because Max Lucado plays golf, and I play golf, and he and I are going to play golf every Sunday. Well, what he forgot was the guy already has all the golfing buddy he needs, and, and he, he's comfortable. He has a routine, and I don't, I, I'm not speaking for Max. I don't know Max that well, but, but this guy who told me he came to this church to meet Max and play golf, after three or four months, he said, I'm going, I'm leaving. You know, I've not been able to play golf with Max. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, and I thought, that's a good illustration. Not everybody has an opening for a best friend. Mm-hmm. But there are some people that do. And so look around and see who doesn't have someone. And then remember, if you have these qualities of some sense of respect and value and you bring something and they're growth-oriented and it's a spiritual mission, right? You shop around looking for that kind of an opening. That's how you build a friendship. And I think you also need to remember that on a practical level – well, I do believe establishing a friendship does have a sense of permanency to it. There is the very real, uh, you know, there's the reality of season of life, time of life, proximity, you know. So, for instance, hey, like I mentioned about high school, college friends. Well, guess what? We all then moved off and did start doing I don't live near those guys anymore. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, but the, the friendship's still there. But in terms of the ongoing investment and those kind of things, those happen very sporadically. So guess what? I've adopted new friends. So when you say there's a limited you know, availability, you've got limited slots, it doesn't mean that when, let's say, you've gotten out of college and you move away from that friend, well, okay, we got to right, cross a line through that person. We're no longer friends, and now I've got to find a new friend. No, it just means you're not having the same kind of time investment, the same kind of closeness, proximity you know, in terms of you know, where you live. And that means you've got to now look in your current environment and say, who can I invest in now? So the whole idea that part of life involves connecting, attaching, bonding well to others. And the call today is to bond well to other males, for males to find good males and to bond well. And it's going to sound funny, but to create deep love stories, man love stories, not wife, husband, wife love stories. That's a different kind of love stories. But where two people, you know, the Bible says lay down their lives, mm-hmm. their time, their money, their effort. They lay down their resources for one another and and they refine one another. And so we are called to love and to love well, and that's to love brothers and sisters well. Mm-hmm. Well, listeners, we're glad you've been with us here this week, and we look forward to having you back here next week on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. 